three minutes just give that tip a tweak see the feeder bounce back there just moving that hook bait trying to entice a fish to grab hold of it and straightening our hook length out more importantly Scoop Minionette. Well hello and welcome to another episode of Cooper's Commercial Match Angling. Uh, I haven't done a video for a long while and had a spare day today so I thought what better way than to come onto the bank. Lovely day as you can see, sun is shining, trying to get the sun behind us. We've just come to do a little session on a maggot feeder, just a few things I've been learning, setups, uh, the way that I sort of modify my feeders, how many maggots to put in, where to cast, basically rotating lines, moving with the fish, uh, little tips and tricks basically to get you a few extra bites on the bank. So we're on the Hackworth Lake at Eden Grange today. And this lake's full of uh, small carp, sort of anything from a pound up to three pound, uh, mainly carp, commons and mirrors. There is the odd chub in here, there is the odd hide and there's some nice, real nice tench as well. So basically, uh, we've just come to have you know a few hours on the bank. Hopefully, get a few bites for you guys. But you no, know, nice, nice to get the cameras back out. To be honest, and hopefully, you'll see us catch a few fish today. The main feeder is just little Drennan feeders. So I like these feeders because they've got interchangeable weights here. You can swap, you know, from a small to a medium weight if you want to cast a bit further, or say you were fishing on a slope and you wanted a bit more weight to hold your feeders still and you can see little modifications so this is basically how they come and then you can see with the medium feeder I've actually cut the holes out to help the maggots release the water's cold in the winter so you've got to try and get your maggots out uh, what I've got set up at the moment is a small feeder and I've got a medium feeder there if they want a bit more bait if you fill your feeders up fully so I'll just show you that and demonstrate that when you've got your feeders rammed full they probably hold about 30 maggots these little feeders there's not a lot of wiggle room for the for the maggots to crawl out you know if we were out fishing with the pole i'm trying to replicate that and put like three four six eight ten maggots in these feeders it gives them a bit more wiggle room and obviously helps them release but if you're wanting to slow things down you can use the ones with the holes in only or you can use if you're wanting a quicker release and obviously when you cast into the lake as well you can also get some maggots falling you're releasing on impact just a little trick basically that i've seen from the edge match focus paul holland and obviously things that i'm thinking about myself while i'm fishing the other feeder that i use basically is like a little window feeder so with this bit it gets you a bit to the bottom but you get a quicker release so you can just put a little bit of crush over the top give them a bit of cloud in the water but also when you wind your feeder in generally they empty really quickly so these feeders when they're sat on the bottom and you can imagine the maggots are freezing you get a slow release and your bait when you wind in can be spread because the maggots are still in the feeder as you wind back you're actually spreading the bait where with these feeders generally they'll leave them where you've cast the only other thing I've got me with me is a stopwatch so I use a stopwatch regularly just so that I can see you know how quick I'm getting bites I'm not leaving the feeder in too long I do always have a catapult because sometimes I will lose feed so if I feel like I need to draw some fish into the area I will lose feed so I'll start just casting the maggot feeder but 
if I if I'm wanting to uh, draw some fishing and maybe later on as the fishing gets better I can loose feed an area have an area where I'm casting just with the feeder or and have an, another area that I'm loose feeding to try and draw some fish for a good sort of run last hour so now I'll just go through with you my setup so basically I'm using a 10 foot tournament rod uh, these are my favorite rods so this is a 10 foot tournament nice and soft so you can you know plenty of bend in the rod you can fish light hook length sort of I say I've sort of two ranges of hook lengths for maggot feeder fishing I fish with an 013 to a 16 SLWG and then I fish with an 015 to a 14 cards on depending on what size fish and whether we're getting plenty of bites that we can get away with using bigger hooks and a bit heavier line I tie all my hook lengths at 12 inch I've got six inches of a twizzled boom. Don't know whether the camera will pick that up there. So I've got a six inch twizzled boom. I've got a quick change swivel so that I can change my hook length easy. And then I've got a float stop just above my boom, a snap link so that I can change basically uh, all of my feeders. And then it's just a running link so most fisheries commercial fisheries these days you've got to have your feeder running so as you can see free free running feeder the thing that i like about this twizzle boom if i drop my hook length there if you can see what happens is because of that float stop it kicks out so it kicks the hook length out away from the feeder and prevents tangles it also gives you that little bit of a stiffer you know you've got a little bit of a stiffer boom here which just kicks your hook length away from the feeder and I have been known to shorten this hook length down to eight to six inch you know so I feel like I'm getting bites and they're picking my hook baits up but I'm not hooking fish then I can actually uh, shorten that hook length down as the fish pick up the hook bait they're hooking themselves against the weight of the feeder or against the tip so I put a little bend in my tip so that's just my setup, very, very simple setup. So we haven't had a cast yet. We're on peg 44, which is practically middle of the lake. I know this peg is a good peg. I know the fish sit in the middle of this lake. So generally, you know, I'm on, I'm on a good peg. I'm hoping I'm gonna get some bites. But if I was fishing the pole on this lake or there was a match on and they allowed us to use the rods, you know, I would, I would chuck short of middle so that I could basically go to the middle because there'd be people opposite. Today we've got the luxury that the lake's empty so I'm going to chuck down the middle to start with in front of myself, pick a line and another line to my right again down the middle of the lake. But if the fish do decide today to back away I've also got the rest of the lake to play with because there's no one on the opposite side and we're not in a match. So that's why I've chosen the middle of the lake because I know the fish live down there anyway and I've got room to, to basically move out. So the first chuck's gonna be in front of myself. I always, I've started on my heavier line, so all 15 to a 14 Kaizen, simply because if I hook a fish, I wanna get it in. If I can't get bites on this, I'll drop down to my all 13 to a 16 SLWG. And the thing in winter as well, I always feel like uh, when we're fishing for these little car, they're quite ravenous fish. So I like to have a standout hook bait. So rather than putting one or two maggots on the feeder for carp, I'm going to put three on and I like two reds and a white. So I'll just show that to the camera there. Just hook the back of my hand. So I've got three maggots on, size 14, two reds and a white because I've been catching fish on this lately, but it's a nice big hook bait, nice big standout bait. And then to start with, I've got the small feeder on. So I've got the small feeder on, but I've got the modified feeder, so the ones with the holes in. So I'm just going to put eight to ten maggots in my feeder, start the session. I'm going to dunk them in the lake, just so it stuns them so they don't wriggle, all wriggle out. You can see there. And I'm just going to cast to my clip in the middle of the lake, nice little plop. Feel that feeder down. Set my rod rest. And just slowly tighten my tip up. So I just get a little bend in the rod. And what I'm what I'm hoping that's happened is potentially 
going down the, the feeder sinking there might have been two or three maggots have come out on impact and they're fluttering down in my peg and then I've got another three or four you know crawling out the feeder they, they've probably released quite quickly but again I'm only putting in six to eight maggots eight to ten maggots just simply to try and see if I can get a lana or a bite and at the moment what happens is your feeder lands and what you what you what I've seen on all these underwater videos is that your hook length nine times out of ten lands right close to your feeder so you've got a slack line so what I tend to do is I'll set my stopwatch so you can see there I've set my stopwatch and what I tend to do is I'll leave it a couple of minutes and then what I'll do is I'll pull my feeder back six inches just to straighten that hook length out obviously if I haven't had a bite bar then but keeping a close eye on to see if there's any fish in, my, in the area you know I expect now that potentially all of them maggots now have either come out on impact and fell down in the water or they've crawled out the ones that have got to the bottom so I've only got as if I was tapping on the pole I've only got my eight to ten maggots in the area and my hook bait which will stand out with my three maggots on and what I'm looking for now is to see if I've got any signs of any fish any little liners any little pulls you know watch the water to see if there's any fish signs of fish topping what well, I've I've fished the feeder on here a couple of weeks ago and had between 40 and 50 carp so a really good days fishing just casting in two spots and what I found that day is I started in one spot and I caught straight away and then all of the fish just drifted and I had to keep following them down the lake we're on here on our own today so potentially that could be something that happens that we catch a couple and the fish move away but we can always then follow them or we can chuck to our other spot to the right or potentially we can peel some line off our clip and we can chuck a bit further so firstly we want to get some signs that's what we're looking for the good thing about the maggot feeder as well is because we're only putting our eight to ten maggots in you know we're not overfeeding an area so if we don't get any signs you know I don't feel like I'm killing my peg so basically you know I feel like I can cast around to find some fish without leaving loads and loads of bait in my peg the fish on this lake tend to sit uh, pegs 58 to 60 on that bank and then on this bank pegs sort of 44 to 42 so I'm sort of at the top end of the fish if anything so second cast you know we've only fed you know maximum sort of 20 maggots but I expect that them maggots have sort of a couple of them have come out when the feeders hit the water so I've got that little bit of attraction with them maggots falling just because I've modified my feeder if I get no signs after half a dozen casts you know potentially what I could do is put the feeder on with the holes unmodified so I can get all my bait to the bottom and have a slow slow release but there's, there's, no, there's no rush in the winter to keep casting in and out you know if you if, you, if you're not getting any signs after eight minutes it probably pays to then there's a little sign and I'll lay a fish on so that was just a nice little couple of nods so that's took less than a, well just over a minute probably a minute and a half with them 30 seconds I missed to start with as you can see we've got a nice soft rod you know so we can absorb the lunges of them fish see what this is or oh, a nice little common so a nice little common to start with so two casts really and the fish is hooked you know I don't know whether you can see that on the camera the fish is hooked in the bottom lip so it's sort of picked my bait up and the hook's gone in its bottom lip slip that out nice little common there let's show that on the other camera put it in my net to put it back as you can see that's like two casts we've only fed like I say 20 maggots maximum a little bit of fall because we've got that feeder on that's been modified so we get that release and then we've had a, a nice little nod there and the tips just kept going so there's no need to change anything we'll just keep casting to that same clip again our eight to ten maggots three maggots on the hook and just see if we can keep bites coming 
we slow down, then we'll make a move. Just our eight to ten maggots. So again, very minimal. You can see how much people will just fill the feeders up. Just very minimal bait, just like I was fishing on the pole. Put them in, put the cap on, give them a quick dunk before they all fall out, and then back on the same clip, little underarm lob. Let that feeder fall without moving it. Set that rod. Just gently tighten up to that feeder without moving it. That's it, reset the stopwatch. Started again. So first cast was in there eight minutes, we never had a sign. Second cast, we've had a fish after about a minute and a half. So let's see what happens this chuck. There's, there's a lot of fish in this lake, so, you know, as you can imagine, you know, on the pole, definitely be more productive, but on the days when you've got that her horrible wind, and you can't hold your pole, you can't present a rig properly, you know, the maggot feeder can be a, a killer tactic, but you've always got to ex uh, try and fish it exactly the same as you would on the pole. Trying to be as accurate as I can, I've clipped up, you know, I'm not going to get broken on this lake. They're only, you know, three pound maximum, the fish, a good average about a pound, pound and a half. I forgot to mention the tip I've got in the rod, so I've just got a one ounce tip in the rod. You know, you could use a three quarter ounce tip, but I certainly wouldn't be going heavier than an ounce. You know, I like to see all the indications in the winter, you know, some of the bites could be really gentle. All the time we're building a little area, so it's just the same as shipping the pole out, tapping eight to ten maggots in, laying your rig in, waiting for a bite. If you don't get a bite, a lift and drop, so our, our lift and drop in effect will just straighten our hook length out. But all the time we're casting to the same spot, just the same as tapping them extra few maggots in and just trying to build an area up, but not disturbing any other water. We've got water to work out to, we've got water to our right and we've got water to our left if needs be. I can always change the position of the rod rest if I feel like the fish are this side and we start seeing fish showing this side. We can always turn the rod rest and, and work our way towards them. If they start showing to my right, I've got these extra lines. But all the time we're building that one spot up at the moment and we've got room to move we haven't gone to our maximum in our peg if i was getting a lot of liners and no bites you know that would be telling me basically i'm potentially casting past the fish as well so if i'm getting loads of pulls and slow pulls the actual ball of fish could be sat closer to me than i think if i'm getting no signs at all that's the time to move around your peg but at the moment great start There you go, rod's gone. So that was a pop a positive bite that one. And that's just four minutes. So as you can see, last time, as I said, the bites were coming within four minutes. And this looks like a really small fish, maybe a chub or a small carp, a little chub. So a little chub's picked it up. You know, you see how violent that bite was, even with a little chub. Again, hooked in the bottom lip. Or the side of the side of the bottom lip. A nice little chub. And I'm just gonna have a look at its mouth. So there's not there's not loads of maggots or anything, we haven't fed a white lot. A nice little chub. Just put him back. Just as you can see, you know, we've had four casts now, two fish, one foul looker, one with no signs at all. But we've actually only put about 30 maggots into our peg, you know, not a lot of bait at all. They've probably crawled off into the silt now, so we're not sort of leaving loads of bait. We're not overfeeding our area. We're just putting enough bait in, hopefully, to get a bite. If I wasn't getting any bites and I felt like I had to up the feed to get bites, I could just put more maggots in the feeder. But by giving them that, that space to move, they can release a lot quicker and we can actually get some maggots falling through the water, which is more attractive to the fish. Not going to change anything, we're just doing exactly the same. Eight to ten maggots in the feeder. 
exactly the same as before let's give them a quick dunk so that we don't lose them all a nice little underhand, underhand lob onto the same clip makes a nice little plop as well when it hits the clip not overcasting not getting any bounce back just hitting that spot every time so we'll give it that six minutes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind in and this time I'm going to actually put a little bit more bait in my feeder because if I need to move it's not a problem but I'm also leaving some bait in my peg so if I do cast with a few more maggots a couple of casts and I don't get any signs all I can do then is I've, I've left a little bit of bait there I can then either move a foot to my right a meter to my right or to that other clip which is about probably 10 meters apart between that line and my other line so I can potentially then just cast you know to that other clip or move towards it but by putting them extra few maggots in I'm leaving them in my peg I can always come back to that line because I'm on the same clip all the time so I can just chuck back to that area giving it a little rest in effect like you would on the pole where you'd have caught a few bites have dried up leave a bit of bait there go and start go and have a go on your other line if you don't get any bites come back to the line after you've had a little rest ten, potentially you get another bite again so it's all about you know working your peg thinking about your fishing thinking about what you're doing so that's been in there seven minutes so I'm gonna wind that back my hook bait looks fine so this time because I'm going to potentially move in a couple of casts I'm going to up the feed slightly so that'll probably half fill the feed of that probably 20 maggots 30 maggots there again you know a lot a lot more full just quick dunk before they all crawl out and back on the same spot straight away there had a little line of there as I was tightening my tip up reset that stopwatch I'm gonna have two casts like this basically I'm just trying to you know entice a bite by feeding a bit more bait drawing some fish in if it doesn't work as I said I've left that bait in my peg so I'll give that four minutes and again I'm just gonna straighten my hook length out what what potentially could be happening as well if there is fish you know I'm not getting a lot of signs so I don't feel like I'm missing bites but potentially because you've got that 12 inch hook length they could actually be picking your maggots up spitting them back out and you're not even seeing the indications so after I've had these few casts and I've looked round my peg potentially I'll shorten that hook length down to as I said previously I was using an 8 inch hook length last time I came it seemed a lot better in turn if you feel the fish are backing away from your feeder you could even lengthen your hook length you know that float stop allows me to move that feeder up so I could end up fishing with a 2 foot, 3 foot, 4 foot tail you can get that slow fall through the water with your maggots but because these fish are small and fairly aggressive you know I, I feel like 12 inch is the sort of longest I want to fish today really but on other days I will try that longer hook length if I'm struggling for bites altogether so no pulls on that so what I feel like you know I feel like the fish potentially we've caught a couple of fish and the fish have just backed away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some fresh hook bait on put my eight maggots in again and I'm going to move a couple of meters to my right because I can always come back to that same line go back to my eight to ten maggots so just a small amount of bait give me a quick dunk but this time I'm going to cast my feeder couple of meters to the right 
keep watching that tip just to see whether they get any liners. You know, I've moved the area that I'm fishing now, so I'm I'm looking for signs of fish all the time. But the beauty of it is I can always go back to that line where I've caught a few. There's a little sign, little liner. That's a good sign. That's after sort of two and a half minutes. Another little sign. tips just pulled around there and stayed then dropped back so there's a few fish you know as I've said I've just made that little move and now I'm getting signs again on my tip so if this doesn't go around what I feel like I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten my hook length down again to that 8 inch because potentially you know there's a little pluck there potentially what I could what could be happening is there is fish eating their maggots but because I've got that longer hook length potentially them fish could be picking my bait up and spitting it back out when you're fishing on here you dot your float down you get tiny little bites so what's going through my mind basically is that you know I know last time by shortening my hook length I got more violent bites and caught a lot more fish and I'm thinking to myself you know that are these fish basically mugging me off you know they're coming in picking my hook length up spitting my hook out because I've had a couple of slow pulls a couple of liners then a little pluck as if potentially it's picked my mag up and spat it back out so I'm definitely on this next cast I'm going to shorten my hook length down to that 8 inches again that was a good length last time so from 12 to 8 inch but in my in my heart of hearts I feel like we should be catching more than we are so we either haven't located the fish yet or basically they're picking our hook bait up spitting it back out or our, potentially as well our hook could be too big so we could probably scale down in fact what I'll do I've got a hook length box here which I tie my hook lengths in I'll get out a 16 to all 13 So these are tied at uh, 12 inch and what I'll do is I won't quite fold it in half so I'll lose you know a good four inch of that hook length put a new loop in so what we'll do this time I'll bait that hook up as well oh there's a little sign that was a small fish bite that that was just like a little rattle while we're waiting just quickly pop these maggots on ready drop them in there wind this in this is this is the beauty of the setup we just slide that little piece of I'll show you on there just slide that little rubber back there's a little hook on the end just hook off that hook length drop that there on the side tray in case we want to go back to a longer one when we start bagging and then pop our smaller hook so we've got now a smaller hook and a shorter hook length And we'll cast back to that same area that we just had them liners and a little tap in and see if by shortening the hook length same again six to uh, eight to ten maggots see if by shortening the hook length we get we get more vicious bites basically So you can see all the time I'm thinking about what I'm doing, you know, why am I getting these liners, why have I had a couple of taps but no fish, you know, potentially them fish are getting away with it basically, so we've dropped out our hook size down to a 16, still with the same hook bait, still our two reds and a white at the moment, 
but we've got basically a shorter hook length to the feeder so hopefully you know the fish will hook themselves against the weight of that feeder as opposed to potentially picking it up and getting away with it I forgot to stop that set that stopwatch again talking to you so we'll start that again and then this time what I'm going to do is after two minutes I'm going to straighten that hook length out so that I'm so I'm confident that I've got my feeder and I've got a straight hook length because I've seen these underwater videos and every time your feeder goes in your hook length lands within a couple of inches of your feeder so you've got a lot of slack line there so that's two minutes just over I'm just gonna pull that feeder back straighten that hook length out basically what that is doing as well is if, if your maggots have sort of emptied out on your feeder and your hook length's there potentially as I've moved that feeder back I'm sort of emptying them out a little bit more but I'm pulling my hook length into the bait as well there you go so we shortened that hook length out it was a nice pull that we just moved that bait there and it was only a minute like last time the last time I was on this lake leaving it two minutes and then just straightening that hook length out got me a lot of bites you can see you've got a lovely soft rod there you know even with that 013 and a 16 SL you know I'm still confident of, of landing this fish feels like a better carp oh there you go lovely lovely common getting on for a pound and a half just net him and again he's just hooked so I'm in the corner of the mouth, that size 16. My hands are freezing, I can't feel them. Just get that hook out. That's it. So here you go, look, lovely carp. Nice fish, you know, a good pound and a half really. Just slipping back. Out the net, there he goes. So you can see, you know, that them little changes, you know, I've, I've moved my area, I've had one sign, but I felt as if basically the fish just pull this hood off. Can't see you. Yeah, I, f I felt as if the fish were picking my hook bait up if they were in the area and getting away with it. So I've just changed that hook to a smaller hook, which again could have made the difference but I've also shortened it down to eight inches. So, you know, and, and a lot more positive bite that time. So let's have another go. If we don't get another bite here and no signs after two casts, what I'll do is I'll drop back on my other line on the, the same clip, but obviously two meters back to the left where I started and just up the feed there a bit just so that I've got a line that I know I wasn't getting any indications on but I'll just up the feed a bit just to see whether I can get them to come to that area and if they don't I'm just gonna I know then basically I'm just gonna have to keep following the fish to a new area new area every time but rather than pile a load of baiting in this spot now I'm going to go back to the original line and put some extra bait there so that I know that line was dead And then I've got the rest of my peg that I can just keep following them to my right. We made that move and we've got a fish in the second chuck. Now we're going to go back to that original line and start giving them some more bait on that line just to see whether they're, need to, they're needing bait basically, they need to come to the bait. So I'm literally now just f basically filling up that feeder now. So back on that original spot, but put in 20 to 30 maggots through the feeder. You know, an area where I can feed a lot more bait and then I've got the rest of my peg I can work on that same clip. So let's see what happens. Another little sign there. It's like one minute 40. So we'll get it to that three minutes and then what we'll do is We'll just straighten that hook length and I'll show you another little tip. Twenty to 
20 seconds and then we'll just straighten our hook length out what what i did on that previous cast rather than moving the feeder slowly i give it a sharp wind on my reel just what that does is it you imagine the feeders on the bottom just by giving it a sharp tug that foot it just puffs up the bottom a bit just gives a little cloud and sometimes that just draws your fish in just by sharply moving your feeder so i'm just basically giving it a sharp wind like that just one wind just pulling that feeder really quickly so it puffs the bottom up and then sometimes that attracts a fish in and nail, nails it to your hook bait so we'll just give it another couple of minutes and just see whether that happens again It looks quite a warm day, the sun's out, but I tell you my hands are absolutely freezing. <laughs> Little sign on the tip then, again, just a, a gentle, we've only moved a couple of mil, which shows there's fish in the area. Just going to twitch that feeder again. There you go, just that little twitch and the rod went just shows you just the, the sat there just looking at the bait and as soon as you move it you know one grabbed it straight away I moved it and the tip just went bang straight round so it just shows you you've got to work that bait all the time that's a nice mirror probably two pound that one Again, hooked in the corner of the mouth. Just get that hook out, I can't feel my fingers. There you go. So that's the biggest fish of the day. Nice two pound mirror. Lovely fish. Just shows you can get bite on a winter's day. Slipping back. Put that net down. So there, just, you know, you can see, I just moved that feeder the second time, fish grabbed it straight away, so just by twitching that hook bait along the bottom, it's created us a bite. So we're going to stick to filling the, mag filling the feeder up, giving it a little twitch after sort of three minutes, just continue on doing a bit of fishing before we make any more moves.
but not least what you can do is you can loose feed an area for later in the session so I'm just going to cast this to the clip so the same area that we've been catching in just tighten the clip up you can see where that feeder landed so last but not least what you can do is you can loose feed a line just where the feed has landed just pinging over 20 maggots twice just building an area up for later in your session so where you where your clip is and you can try and gather some fish there so you can chuck around your peg catch a few fish but while you're doing that you can prime that line and then you can have your last sort of half an hour hour of the match just literally feeding over your loose feed don't feed too regular because if you feed too regular what happens is the fish will come off the bottom so I'm like casting to my clip in line with the pallet where I've been catching fish feeding 20 maggots twice over the top and I've got my feeder which is like my little trap but I've got a loose fed area around it trying to draw some fish in and then pin them to my, to my feeder so that's sort of your last method that you can do so hopefully you know we've had a couple of hours we've probably caught about 20 fish so the, just this last half an hour of the session now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast to that same spot I've been catching in which has been the best area I'm going to loose feed over the top hopefully sucking some more fish in so we can get a good run at the end of the session so that's that's the plan sort of for the next half an hour hour see if we can actually catch on our loose fed line if we can't we can always keep chucking and searching our peg and just keep dropping back onto that line keep loose feeding it so 20 maggots twice say, every 10 minutes just loose feeding building a little area up so you're not feeding too much bait and as, as i said don't feed too regular because you'll just draw the fish off the bottom obviously we're fishing on the bottom with the feeder so i don't want fish up in the layers otherwise you know i'm never going to get a bite basically so we'll just see how this goes for the last half an hour loose feeding the maggots every 10 minutes just see if we can draw some fish in that area and get a good run of fish before we sort of call it a day. Little indication on the tip there. It's just a slow pull, it's like a little liner. We'll give it that three minutes again, and then we'll just pull back 12 inches, straighten our hook length out. That's our three minutes. Just give that tip a tweak. See the feeder bounce back there. Just moving that hook bait, trying to entice a fish to grab hold of it and straightening our hook length out more importantly. And there you go, that little move, seeing that bite, literally 20-30 seconds after we tw tweaked it, that's over our loose fed line. Feels like a, a carp, a better fish, not a chub this time. So you can see just th them little tweaks, three minutes, and just give it a little twitch, straighten that hook length out. It's brought us another nice fish, another nice carp. Just to end the session on. Oh, hook's just pinged out there. there you go a lovely little comment to finish the day on nice fish just over that loose fed line so if you've enjoyed the episode please like and subscribe to my channel and as always don't forget scoop in your net.